I just got some happy mail and you know what that means. It is time for another mystery box challenge, so stay tuned. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and I love to share tips, tricks, and tutorials all around giving you a DIY home that you love on a budget. So if you like to DIY, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future video. Now let's get into the mystery box. If you are new to this whole collab, it started well over a year ago. I think we're almost to two years by Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. She is one of the sweetest people I've ever met. So if you do not subscribe to her channel, be sure to do so if you like DIYs that I do, you will absolutely love her content. And here's a list of everybody participating in this round. Everybody gets a name and you pack up a box with a certain set of rules and regulations and then you send it off to the person that she tells you to and then you in turn get a mystery box from someone else. My box came from Jamie over at the Crafty DIY Guy. I got to know Jamie a lot better when we went on our Boston trip and he has such a good time. My box went over to Shannon over at the Cozy Christmas cottage she might look familiar because she's also at the daily DIYer but if you didn't know she has a full channel dedicated to Christmas so if you haven't subscribed to that be sure to check out that video next so you can see what I sent her here's what I'm working with and there's a card here at the top I am nervous and excited you would think I'd get less nervous each time but I feel like it gets more nervous because people get better with ideas oh look at this cute card Whitney I hope you enjoy this box of goodies thumbs things you might not like but I know you can create with and then he also says the socks are a gift for you because you know I love socks we had a really fun in-depth conversation about Dollar Tree socks we are sock buddies now thank you for these I will definitely be wearing those while I craft oh, okay he knows me black and white buffalo check fabric there are definitely some things we could do with that we've got one of these little triangles here's another one. Oh, this is fantastic we've got a house we've got an arrow the one thing i forgot at the beginning is that there's also two challenge items that you have to send the people have to craft with and he look at they're so cute and numbered. So I'll wait, I'll save those till the end. Oh, these are cute. These are Dollar Tree. They say, don't quit your daydream. We're gonna do something cute with these. I don't know what, but they are very cute. And they're nice little like hollowed boxes in the back. These, I got these last time from Shannon when she sent me those. These are what I turned into the knobs on the Etch-A-Sketch. The last one I did a whole video on elf themed DIYs for the last mystery box. So I will link that down below if you wanna check it out. We've got some popsicle sticks and some chunky knit yarn, sparkle chenille yarn. Okay, okay. We've got some black beads. This is the Walmart garland. Their garland section's been insanely awesome this year. Oh, that's cute. Looks like a graduation, but the little um, globe is cute. Oh, glitter bomb. Jamie, to put on a hazmat suit to get those things out. Okay, so we have challenge number one, challenge number two, and maybe they're really cutely packaged because they're hard. Hoping that's not the case, but we'll start with number one. I feel like the Jaws theme should be playing in the background. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. So we've got Dollar Tree building blocks and Dollar Tree building circles. Super cute for school. Not sure how we're gonna do Christmas with this. This feels like a can of something. He was joking about sending spam. If he sent me spam, I don't even want to look. I'm scared. Oh, pretty close. <laughs> Some chicken and dumplings. I'm gonna take a couple days, figure out what I'm gonna do with all this stuff, and I will meet back with you. Some of them clicked right away, and other ones I had to really percolate on to figure out what I was gonna do. Let's kick it off with this Dollar Tree house. I've got a really fun idea in mind for my gingerbread dining room. I have been obsessed with gingerbread DIYs this year. I decided to do my dining room and also my kitchen. And so I grabbed some of these houses to do this idea and I just haven't gotten around to it because it's been crazy this Christmas. So I decided what time is better than the present to get this done. So the first thing I needed to do was remove the stickers and I did that with a heat gun and my Cricut little scraper. And then I painted all of the houses on the back as well as the sides with nutmeg brown. This is just apple barrel paint that you can get for under a buck for container at Walmart. 
Then to make these things really look like gingerbread houses, I decided to use some of my leftover puffy paint. This is what I used in my previous video when I did my faux gingerbread cookies. And so basically what I did is the same thought process as what I did there. So I just pulled up a picture on Pinterest of some different gingerbread house cookies and I tried to recreate them. Here I went a little too fancy with the windows, but it kind of looks like snow was drifting. And then I made it a lot more simple with the other ones, as you can tell here, I got a little over my skis, but I let them dry overnight. And then in the morning they were ready to go. You can put these out just as decor, or these would even be cute kind of tucked into your tree. I love that they're bigger than the cookies, but they still have a thin profile and would fit on any shelf. So out of the challenge items, we are gonna use these little stacking discs and I'm taking my miter shears and cutting off two of the little circles at a time. I wanted to make sure to leave the little middle part on there so then that way they stayed together because I want them to kind of look like berries and you'll see where I'm going in just a minute. I cut up enough so I had 20 little pairs of two. Then I took them outside and used some satin apple red spray paint to spray paint them all and to really make them look like berries. Then I have a ton of felt in my stash. I think I bought them for projects when I thought I didn't have any felt and I should have just checked because I had it. Anybody else have that problem? Well, I decided to use all six pieces of my felt and create these little leaves. So I just freehand cut a little template and it kind of looks like a teardrop or just a leaf. And then I doubled up the felt so that I could cut multiple at once. I probably ended up cutting 40 or 50 of these, just whatever fit on six pieces of felt. And that allowed me to make a long enough garland to fit where I wanted to put it. I also took my scraps and cut maybe 10 smaller leaves so that I could fit them in if I had any gaps. To make the leaves 3D, I put a little bit of glue at the end and pinched them together to get this little curved 3D look. And I went through and did that to all of the leaves that I cut. Once those were done, it was time to assemble. So I cut a few different strips of felt to be kind of the center of it. And I added glue to the ends of each of my pieces, whether it be the right or the left side. However, I was gonna attach it to the strip. And I looked at a few different tutorials of these felt garlands to kind of see what I wanted. And I kind of did a hodgepodge of two different ones. So the strip in the center and then the two on the side. A lot of them had the leaves hooked together, but I liked using the piece in the center because that gave me more stability. And it also kept it linear instead of just kind of looking more natural. I wanted it to look linear. I made about five or so of these little pieces just because that's as long as I could cut my felt and then it was time to hook them together. So I just took some more hot glue and in the top opening of one, I inserted with some hot glue the longer piece of the other one, held it together and as you can see here, our garland is coming together. I repeated that with all of the pieces until I got the length of garland that I wanted. The center was looking a little funky to me, so I ended up adding just a teeny little strip of hot glue and I cut some more smaller strips of felt. I tried to get them all the same length and then I added the piece to the center there to have it look more like a vine or just the center of this garland. Don't worry about the little seams because I ended up using the extra leaves to cover that up. Then for our berries, I added some glue to that little middle part that I told you to keep on when you were cutting and I stuck it to that center piece. That piece not only covered up the center that I didn't like the look of, but it also gave my glue something to grab onto when I was sticking my berries into the center. And that is it. Honestly, I've seen these on Pinterest and Etsy for years and I thought they would be way harder, but they came together beautifully and I love the use of the challenge item here. Now I wanted to put this under our TV in our living room because that area was a little blah and I also decided to do a beaded garland along with it. Now I loved these black beads and I was sad to have to DIY with them but what I was able to do is DIY with about half because it was a six foot long strand and then I was able to keep a strand for myself for regular decor. 
So I sorted my beads large and small just into a cup when I took them off the original strand and then I split them in half and strung them up so I could take them outside and spray paint them. I spray painted them on the little twine just so they didn't go everywhere when I spray painted them and then I also put them on some Dollar Tree little drying racks to hopefully help them not kind of roll around on me. I'm using the same color red as I did for and then I took a flat white spray paint to the other ones. Also, while I was spray painting, because it was like 60 degrees in Illinois in December and it was amazing, I also sprayed the rest of those little pieces that I got as the challenge item because I thought these would make great snowflakes. So with the hole in the center, it made it really easy to string those up as little snowflakes along with my red and white beads. And here I did no pattern. I kind of went for whimsy and fun and I just did what I was feeling. So maybe it was the same color twice. Maybe it was the same size twice, but I really love how it turned out. I think it goes so perfect with this garland. And I think these two are going to be staples in my Christmas decor for years to come. I just took some command strips and I put them on our little corner shelf for our living room TV. And then I made sure to put one in the center so it kind of swagged there. But I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm so happy with how this turned out. This could have been a fail, but I'm so glad it wasn't. Every mystery box, Courtney has been giving us a challenge to craft with. Well, for this Christmas one, there is a twist on it. And instead of doing a crafting challenge, it's a random acts of kindness challenge. Courtney lost her mom earlier this year. And so in honor of her mom, as well as loved ones that we all have, we were all challenged to do a random act of kindness. For me personally, I have a rare blood type and the blood donation centers are always wanting me to come in and donate. My grandfather on my mom's side also had the same blood type and he was very active, donating blood, and wanting to really help others. So this challenge got my tush in gear and I made an appointment. As I was giving blood, the girl in there told me that around the holidays and the summer are the two big times that they see their numbers for donations decrease. So if you're able to give during this holiday season, please do so. Now, Courtney has made an awesome free printable that has a ton of different ideas. And so I wanna challenge you and all of us here doing this collab wanna challenge you to do a random act of kindness between now and Christmas just to spread a little love and some joy through this Christmas season. So if you want to check out that printable, it is down in the description box for you. You can download it. Be sure to tag Courtney. Now let's run through Starbucks and pay for the people behind me because who doesn't love coffee and free coffee during the Christmas season? Just say happy holidays and tell happy her to pass holidays. it on. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. I absolutely loved this challenge. So Courtney, know that we are all behind you in celebrating your mom this holiday season. Just know you've got a whole crafting community behind you. So I'm not gonna lie, when Jamie sent me this yarn, I was like, why is it not white? It would be so much easier if it was white. But then it hit me and I thought of this idea to use it for. So if you've been around a while, you have heard me talk about Finn's love for Mickey. And when I did some Disney DIYs for Halloween, you guys liked them. So we're gonna do another one. I took this medium wreath form from Dollar Tree as well as this two pack of small ones. And you could get these really anywhere, but these were already in my stash. And then with some black zip ties, I hooked on the smaller two to the top to give myself a Mickey head. Then we're gonna grab that yarn and we're gonna get wrapping. I started by wrapping around both of the circles and then went around the ear, worked my way across the kind of forehead, I guess, did the other ear and all the way around. I ended up cutting smaller pieces and then tying them together as I went. You just wanna make sure that your knots are hidden in the back. So once it was done, it looked like this. And then I decided to tie on my Christmas elements because I want to be able to switch this out for other seasons for Finn. For Christmas, I took his baby's first Christmas Santa hat that I got him last year, 2020, for his first Christmas. And I figured why keep it in a box when we could display it and see it. So I grabbed that as well as some red felt and I'm just gluing it together to make a little bow tie here. I'm tying it together with some baker's twine and I'm using long enough baker's twine that I can then tie it around the bottom of the Mickey head. I gave the ends a trim so the bow looked a little bit more whimsical. I added a little candy I made in a previous video out of hot glue. I will link that if you missed it and that just added a little bit more Christmas fun. The last step was to take a scrap piece of yarn and tie it on so that the hanger matched the wreath. 
I am a Disney fan myself, but we have gotten a lot more into Mickey and Minnie and all of the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse friends lately, and I love the sentimental value as well with this. We're going to hang it on the linen closet door right outside Finn's room, and he loved it when he woke up from his nap and saw it hanging there. Next up, we're going to use these craft sticks, and I love that this challenge has gotten me to make a lot of things that have been on my list I just haven't gotten around to. This one being a super large set of snowflakes for Christmas and beyond. I plan to use these in my winter decor after Christmas. So first, I did two of the large popsicle sticks and glued them together in the center, and you're going to need six of those. Second, you're going to need six of these V's. They're about 45 degree angles, give or take. You just want to make sure they're all the same, so that's why I'm gluing them together on a stack. So then after you have all of those, I just trimmed one of the ends of my two pieces together so it was flat and didn't have the curve. Then I have six of my carrots. Then I also took six more craft sticks, cut the ends off so they were flat, and then cut them in half for the ends of my snowflake. Then it was time to assemble and I pulled up a picture on Pinterest of somebody else's large craft stick snowflake so that I knew I was kind of laying it out correctly. Here's what it ended up looking like. I added hot glue to assemble everything together. And then the final step was to hot glue two of the little half cut pieces to the center to cover up any gapping that I had there. When I went to pick it up here, it felt a little flimsy, so I just added a couple more craft sticks with hot glue on the back to reinforce the center so it didn't bust on me. Now granted, they are craft sticks, so it's not going to be the most solid thing, but that will help. <laughs> then I decided to spray paint mine. It just was so much easier to take them outside and spray paint, but you could absolutely paint it by hand, or you could even stain them. I haven't decided where they're going to live, but they would look gorgeous on the wall, but I really do think I'm going to put them on my mantle for my winter decor. These are so quick and easy and super budget friendly to get a huge bang for your buck. Up next, we're going to tackle a challenge item, the can of soup. All right, so this dumplings and chicken, it's got to go. So we're taking the stuff on the inside and dumping it out. I cleaned it out as well as four other cans that I had been saving throughout the week since I knew I had to craft with a tin can, and I am going to drill a hole in the center. Make sure you're using a metal drill bit and that you are super careful when you're doing that. Then I just took some satin gray spray paint and covered them a little bit, mainly to cover the top because it had like writing on it and I just didn't want that on there. Then we're going to turn these into bells. So I grabbed some of these crafter square jingle bells and before I hung them up, I just took a little bit of this nautical twine. This came from Menards, but you can use Dollar Trees. I just did a strip around the bottom to make them look a little bit more rustic and you don't have to glue around the entire thing. I just did one kind of where it started and then another glob kind of around so it would stay. Then to string them up, I took some of my white twine again, strung it through the hole, and then tied my jingle bell to the end. The jingle bell is also going to act as a stopper, so when you are hanging up your bells, it's going to hold. Then once I had all of them hung up, I made sure to give myself a decent amount of slack, and then I just started pulling the various strings so that they would hang at different levels. I tied off the ends and I hung them on my banister because I'm doing like a winter wonderland theme here this year. They look really good hanging there and honestly if you look close you can tell they're tin cans but you wouldn't think that off the top. So I've got a lot of white happening especially with the banister rails so I like the gray. And reality check if you look to the left this is what my house looks like when I craft. Supplies everywhere. Up next we're going to tackle two of the box items, these signs as well as these finial caps. Now, the more I looked at those boxes, I did not want to paint them or do anything to them because they totally match my style and they're really good quality for Dollar Tree. So I just cut out some printables to insert and the size 2.25 by 3.25 worked perfectly. So I did one as your house on fire, Clark, because we all know I'm obsessed with Christmas vacation. And then I also did one seeing isn't believing, believing is seeing from the Santa Claus. Then for the finial caps, I decided to turn them into mini Christmas lights, the larger kind of colored bulbs that you think of with Christmas Vacation. So I went through and did a large and a small in red, green, blue, and yellow. And then I did the bottom in a gray so that it looked like the kind of bottom part of those bulbs. 
The last step was to hot glue them all around the outside and it added some color and some fun to this sign. What I love about the fact that I glued on just to one of them is that this other one could be switched out for any season and this one can permanently stay in my Christmas vacation collection. If you're like me, you've probably seen a lot of people DIY this Dollar Tree triangle sign and I wanted to do something a little different. Well, I remembered this sign that I got from Walmart and I thought the bottom might look cute as like a snow globe. So I just popped off the sign from the stake. It was a $3 Walmart sign and I glued it on the top so the bottom kind of looks like the bottom of a snow globe because the sign is a circle. Then I just took some candy cane ribbon that I've been using all season. I got this from Hobby Lobby and I just tied a cute little bow. Sometimes simple DIYs, like I overthink it way too much, but this I love so much. It's nice and simple. I love that the bottom is kind of a wood tone and I love the retro Santa look. This next one kind of gives me like the twingies as I'm watching it because as I cut this, it was like glitter bomb all over my table. So thank you for that, Jamie. But the first thing I did with this present was trim all that tinsel off so that I just had the base. I had this burlap canvasy material in my stash, so I decided to cut it and wrap the present and anywhere that you would normally put tape on wrapping paper, I put glue. Once my present was wrapped, it was time for some ribbon. So I took some of the Buffalo check fabric that Jamie sent me and I cut a nice long piece that I could use as ribbon to wrap around and have it pop off my gift. Then we're gonna pair this with the Fantastic sign. So I decided to dismantle this. And by the time I reviewed everything and kind of got a closer look, the only thing that I needed to salvage was that back cardboard piece. The rest of it, I took it out and pitched it. Then I took it outside and spray painted it with just some flat white to match my decor better. Then I took this free Grinch printable that's available over at the Navage Patch and I took a 16 by 20 print and just sized it down to four and a half by five and a half. I then used a glue stick to hook it to that cardboard piece that I saved, pushed in the pegs in the back so it wouldn't move. Now it's from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You know, maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. It's a beautiful printable. I also have it in a larger frame in my house. And so it fits to have the present next to it. This is a cute little Grinch inspired piece that is a little bit more neutral, a little bit more toned down. So if you want to nod to the Grinch without greens and reds and all that colors, this could be for you. I really like that fabric that Jamie sent me. So I decided to make one of these candy cane wreaths with a wreath form that I have had. So I decided to start with the hot glue in the corner and wrap the fabric around. Now I am not the first nor the last person to probably do one of these neutral candy canes, but I think they're really cute. And I thought it would look cute as well on my banister or hanging as a wreath. So I decided to make one for my house and I wanted to share it with you in case you haven't seen this before. I continued with my canvas piece all the way around the top and then I just kind of tucked the ends and folded it over so that it was kind of covered and you know there weren't any weird edges. When in doubt, tuck and glue. Then I took that fabric and cut a nice long strip again that I could wrap around my candy cane essentially to be the stripe but in this neutral version of the candy cane. Same thing again, tuck and glue. And then my last thing to do was add an embellishment. So I decided to take this little $3 pick from the Target dollar spots, like some mistletoe, and I added it to it. I also had a pick with some red berries in it, but it just wasn't working for what I wanted. This I liked a lot better. I just added some jute twine to the top so I could hang it up. And now I have my candy cane wreath completed two years later, nonetheless, but it happens to everybody. You add it to your must craft list and sometimes you get to it, sometimes you don't. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed all of these projects that came out of that mystery box. Thank you, Jamie, for sending me some awesome items. So if you're on the playlist, next for you is Shannon's video over at the Cozy Christmas Cottage. If you aren't on the playlist and you came direct to this video, go down and click the link in the description box. It'll run you through on a loop and you can see everyone's video in order. So my box went to Shannon, then Shannon's box to the next person all the way around until you get to Jamie's video and come back to me. Thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to see your random acts of kindness. Merry Christmas and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!